Hello fellow 3D enthusiast! Today we're going to talk about sculpt mode. So this is part three in a series I'm doing. The first two are kind of important if you want to go back and look at those. Those are the basics about navigation and object mode and edit mode. Let's talk about sculpt mode now. So a lot of the time sculpt mode is used more for organic things like uh, creatures and humans and rocks and just things that you would find more in nature rather than man-made objects. So instead of using this cube to start, I'm going to use a monkey head. To delete this cube, you can hit X and then just select delete. And to add in a monkey head, you hit shift A and mesh and monkey. I'm just gonna jump into sculpt mode here with tab and then sculpt. And here you are. So I was just looking over sculpt mode a bit, planning out, and I realized it's really not very beginner friendly. You've just got all these things and some stuff up here. So that we have a little bit more help, I'm just going to go up to view here and select tool settings. And that way you can see the settings of your brush, which aren't immediately available. I feel like that's kind of a problem, but anyways, here they are. And so now we can do some basic sculpting. I'm just going to turn up the radius a little bit, and you just click and drag on parts that you want to be affected. As you can see here, <laughs> the eyes are really bulgy now. What I'm planning to do in a second here is just to add a neck and shoulders so that it's not just a head, but I'm getting ahead of myself. A few features in sculpt mode that are pretty good to know about are if you click the sculpt drop down here, you can see all these things that say symmetry and right now X symmetry is enabled. When I sculpted the eye a bit here, you could see that the other eye popped out as well. And I find when you're doing a face or something like that, that can be really helpful because you don't have to do everything twice. But if you're doing something more randomized, like a rock, for example, you probably don't want it to be symmetrical on the other side. So just be aware of the symmetry. And you can also do different axes as well. So you can have Z symmetry or Y symmetry, which is front to back or top to bottom. Now, I said I was going to add a neck, and an important thing to know about sculpt mode is that you can only sculpt the vertices that are there. So, if we go into edit mode, you can see there aren't a whole lot of vertices here to work with. So, one thing you could do is you could grab these and extrude them down and get a basic shape first that you could then sculpt over. Or, you could do what I'm about to do now, which is enabling dynamic topology and it comes up with this little thing, and you just click OK. You can see all of a sudden everything sort of turned into triangles, and that means you're on the right track. So in dynamic topology, it's really cool. It adds in detail wherever you sculpt. So if I were to sculpt around the neck here, you can see everything starts to get a lot smoother just because it's dropping in a whole bunch of detail. So to get this to go down a little bit, I'm just going to turn up the strength. To get less detail, you can back up a little bit. So I've got this wild thing going on, and I'm just going to grab this part and sort of bring it out towards me. And remember, I have symmetry enabled, so there's one on the other side too. Now I'm going to use the brush called Clay Strips, and I just sort of like the way that works. It's got some nice flow to it. And I'm going to add some crappy collarbone things here, and maybe some shoulder muscles. It's important to note that I'm definitely not very well versed in the anatomy of a monkey, but... <laughs> Just gonna add in some stuff here that looks kind of alright. It's kind of a human-ish monkey. Anyways. <laughs> you got the idea. So dynamic typology is a pretty good way to get a lot of detail into your model. But if you wanted to do something a bit different, if you added in another monkey head and go to modifiers, you can use the multi-resolution modifier, which, once you add it in, does nothing. But if you hit subdivide over here, you can see everything gets a lot smoother. 
And when you go into sculpt mode, there's a lot more to work with. This is a silly example, but... And if you need even more to work with, you can just hit subdivide again. So this probably won't... Whoa. So this probably won't work too amazingly for adding in a neck, just because it doesn't add quite as much as you need to get all that detail. But that'll smooth things up for you a little bit, and that's pretty nice. One more tip for doing organic models, since we're kind of talking about that anyways, is if you right click with your object selected and click shade smooth, you can see everything gets a lot less faceted and jagged, which can just help a little bit when you're making organic things. So that's it for sculpting. I'm not going to touch on all these brushes here. That's actually a lot of fun just to figure out what they do yourself and experiment. So there you go. That's the basics. You know how to get the tools and the symmetry and everything like that. So have fun with it. Do some experimenting. So I hope you found that helpful, and I'll catch you in the tutorial tomorrow about weight painting, which just a heads up will probably be a little bit more advanced. Cheers!